pillow. Okay. And then what you're going to do is just lie back onto the bolster. Your hips will remain on the ground. If you feel like the lower back has um, been shortened, if it feels a little crunchy, um, try lifting your hips, lengthening your tailbone down, and then setting the hips back down to create that length. And then hopefully this feels supportive. Hopefully this is supporting your upper back and shoulders. The blanket should support the head so that the neck can relax. And then you've beautifully rolled your palms open so that the shoulders can soften down away from the, the ears. Allow the legs to relax. And let's just start with a little bit of mindfulness. So I want you to pay attention to the way that your body is resting on the ground. Just notice all the places where you're touching the earth, where you're touching the bolster. And get acquainted with that connection. You may also notice the way that your clothes are feeling on your body. Just allowing the sensation of the clothing to help us tune into our body's sensation. Notice the temperature of the air of the room that you are in. How does the air feel on your face? And now begin to notice your breathing. Notice it at the nostril area. And then follow your breath wherever it goes in your body. See if you can notice the breathing from the inside out. Our intention for this evening's class is to train the body and mind to surrender to the practice. We'll call this softening the edges. And so with every gentle exhale, can you find somewhere in the body to soften? Could be in the eyes, the cheeks, the jaw. Sometimes it's in the mind. We may be stuck in a place that's in the past or an idea, or something we're thinking about that hasn't quite happened yet. It's in the future. Sometimes we may need to find a way to soften the mind the edges of the mind, and just allow ourselves to be here in this moment as best we can. One of my favorite mindfulness teachers, Tara Brock, often reminds us during meditation that thoughts are not the enemy. It's not that we're trying to get rid of them but we're more so allowing them to float by in the same way that clouds float by in the sky. 
So this process of softening in the body and mind is a, like a way of allowing sensation to come and go and allowing thoughts to come and go. Now we'll start to bring a little bit of movement into our practice. So I'd like you to bring your attention to your fingers and your toes. And just give them a little bit of a wiggle. Starting to awaken the hands and the feet. And then go ahead and point and flex your feet starting to awaken the ankles a bit. And then if you feel called to, let's inhale the arms up and overhead and enjoy a nice big body stretch. You're welcome to roll your wrists here. Awaken the wrists and the forearms as you point and flex the feet. Feel the activation of the legs. You might even squeeze the glute muscles. You might even squeeze the abdominal muscles here. Just awakening to your full body as it stretches. On your next exhale, you're going to release your arms all the way back down by your sides. And then just let the arms and the body rest for a moment. So during our practice this evening, let's keep the definition of yoga in mind. Yoga means to connect, means to yoke. That's another word um, I've seen it translated as. Um, it's a union. It's creating a union between mind and body, a union between breath and movement, a union between the heart and the mind. There's so many ways that we can define yoga um, under that context. So you might, let's keep that in mind as we do our practice this evening. Because from this integration, this kind of connection that occurs while we're practicing comes liberation. And when we meet that place of liberation, of freedom, of moksha, well that, that is really when the yoga is happening. So I'd like you to bend your knees, and place your feet down onto the mat, and then gently press yourself up from your Shavasana setup. And we're going to take a, a comfortable seat. Yeah, you can break that setup down because we don't need it anymore. If you want to use any of your goodies, um, like the blanket to sit on or anything like that, you're welcome to. Just make sure that you're not so high that you aren't able to reach the earth behind you with at least your fingertips. Okay, good. And then we're gonna sit with the legs crossed for a moment and find a nice alignment of the spine. So with your palms resting on your knees, I want you to close your eyes and bring your attention down to your sit bones, down to your base, that place where you're still connected to the earth. And just visualize your pelvis okay, down there and see if you can align your spine so that it feels as if your heart is over your pelvis and your head is over your heart. So it's, there's these beautiful curves in the spine and just like a meditation um, stack of stones next to a river, we find that perfect alignment where we experience um, the length of the spine, but also an effortlessness, a, a sense of ease in the body. Let your shoulders soften away from your ears. And then go ahead and open up your eyes. 
and you're going to bring your palms in your lap to stack one on top of the other. Okay. Yeah, and then just go ahead and drop your palms down into your lap. And imagine that this represents your pelvic floor. Right down at the pelvic floor is where that root chakra resides, that grounding, centering um, space of stability. It's our center of survival. And so imagine that this little hammock of your hand is just like the hammock of the pelvic floor. And use the hammock of the hand to help you connect to the hammock of the pelvic floor. It's a sheet of muscle that just uh, resides between the sit bones, the pubic bone, and the tailbone. You might even give a gentle little squeeze, almost as if a, a little elevator is trying to lift something up towards the navel center. If this is new, it might feel a little strange or a little new, confusing, and, and that's okay. Just open to an interesting experience, a new experience as best you can. And then on your next breath in, and just trust yourself here, you're gonna start to bring your palms up through your navel center. Imagine that you're just drawing some of that grounded, rooted, centering, stable energy up into the navel. Breathe naturally here, inhale and exhale as you start to bring that energy up into the heart center. And then continue up through the throat center. And you can reposition your hands at any time so it feels okay with the, the wrists as you start to bring your palms up above your head. Moving past the face, past the third eye center, all the way up to the crown of the head. And then allowing your palms stacked one on top of the other to just rest above your head maybe about two or three inches. And see if you can still connect with that strong rod of energy you've created from your tailbone all the way up, feeling rooted as we rise. And from here, you're gonna separate your palms apart so your arms are in a nice big wide V shape. And I want you to think of lifting from your upper back Soften the tops of the shoulders if they feel like they're building tension. And just breathe. And now on your next exhale, you're gonna to start to wiggle your fingers and create some rain as we rain our fingers all the way down to the earth. And letting your breath flow as gentle and as natural as it wants. Now you're gonna to touch the earth with your right fingertips. And as you inhale, you're gonna take your left arm up and then you're gonna to start to lean over towards the right side of your mat. And just enjoy a gentle side bend here. See if you can feel the breath in the sides of your ribs, sides of your waist. And while you're here, you're welcome to look down the right arm and you might even turn the head and, and look towards the inside of your left arm. And just moving the head and the neck in any way here that would help to, to free up some tension. Beautiful. And now we're rooting down through your base as you inhale, you're going to come up through center. And touch both palms here above the head. And then as we exhale, we're going to make our way to the other side. So the left fingertips find the earth now. The right arm rises up, and then we start to lean over towards the left. Beautiful, softening that space where the neck meets the tops of the shoulders. And turning the head to look down and then up in any way that feels right here. And breathing attention into the sides of the ribs, the sides of the waist. And then you're gonna inhale your way back through center. We're gonna bring both arms up above our head. Touch your palms together. 
And then on your next exhale, go ahead and slide your hands all the way down to your heart center. Beautiful, okay. And now from here, you're going to bring the soles of your feet together and allow your knees to open up out to the side for a pose called bound ankle pose. And so this is a stretchy pose. It's a nice opener for the inner thighs and the hips. The closer the feet are to your pelvis, uh, the more you may feel the stretch, the further away, the more forgiving it is for the inner thighs and the hips. See if you can strike a balance between effort and ease here, something that just feels right. You're, you're going to bring your hands to the earth behind your hips. And you want to turn your palms so that your fingertips are pointing towards the feet, okay, in the same direction that the toes are pointing. The palms can flatten onto the earth here as long as you can remain tall in the spine. Try and align the heart over the pelvis again and the head over the heart. If you need to pop up onto the fingertips in order to um, achieve that, that's okay. Bring your elbows towards one another if they're not already. From this angle, it looks like they already are, Dana. The shoulder blades are coming towards one another here to create a nice stretch across the chest. Now take a moment to just breathe down into your hips. This is a lovely pose. Um, it really counters all of our um, sitting in a chair for long hours a day. If you've been doing that today, this is a great one to increase circulation to your hips and your lower back. It's a really lovely pose for the reproductive organs and some of the other wonderful organs we have that um, help with releasing and detoxing. Okay, now we're going to release. We're going to take this into a forward fold. So you're gonna bring your hands in front of your ankles now, and then start to walk your hands forward onto the mat, stretching the arms out, and hinging forward at the hip creases as you start to drop the upper body down towards the legs. Now this is turning this into more of a stretching pose. A nice stretch for the outer hips, the lower back, the upper back, and the back of the neck. And so we'll only go as far as feels comfortable. Reconnect with your breath. Try and connect your breathing here with a gentle release of the body into this posture. We are able to slowly and mindfully build each pose out of the breath's vibration. So let your breath be what moves you. From here, we're going to make our way back to the upright position. And so take your time. If you'd like, you can take the hands behind the knees and then help the knees together. From here, we're going to swing the legs to one side and then come to our hands and knees. Now, I was just going to suggest that if you feel like the knees could use a little extra support, take your blanket, place it down the middle of the mat. And then set yourself up for success by bringing your hands under your shoulders, your knees under your hips. Widen the fingers. Good. And now let's move through some gentle cat-cow. So on your next breath in, you're going to lift your heart, lift your tailbone, and lift your head. As you exhale, you're going to round your spine. Let your tailbone drop, lift through the back of the heart, and then let your head drop. Let's try that again. As we inhale, we're settling into the saddle of the back. Remember to keep the neck nice and long here. Reach through the crown of the head. And then as you exhale, round your spine like a Halloween cat. 
the shoulder blades, they widen across the back and the navel center draws in. Take a few more rounds at your own breath pace, letting your breath be what moves you, what guides you in and out of each pose. This is a way of working with uh, purpose in our practice. We allow our breath to be what guides us. And when we work with this kind of purpose, the poses really come alive. They become easy and fluid, not forced or stiff, not feeling like we're out of breath. When we move this way, we can really soften and untighten the areas in the body that need loosening. So let's go ahead and come back to center spine, neutral spine. And we're going to walk the hands forward a couple of inches in front of the shoulders in preparation for a little inversion. So I'd like you to shift your body forward so that your shoulders float back over your wrists. The hips come forward a little at the knees here for a variation of plank pose. You're gonna curl your toes under and on your next exhale, lift your hips and push your hands into the earth and make your way into a downward facing dog. As the hips go up, you can start to straighten the legs any amount here that allows you to keep the spine nice and long. Feel free to pedal your feet. You can bend one knee, sink the opposite heel. Keep rooting through the palms, lifting through the arms, lifting through the sides of the waist. Let your head drop. I love inversions. Anytime we get a chance to flip our world upside down like this, we're turning also the body's endocrine system upside down for a little bit, which is really replenishing and rejuvenating for the mind, for the body. It can almost be like taking a nice shower. It's very cleansing, very clearing if the mind is busy. It can be very relaxing for the body. We'll take another breath here. And then as you exhale, come on back down to your knees and make your way into a child's pose by bringing the two big toes to touch, the knees apart, a little wider than the hips if you'd like, and then allow the hips to move back towards the heels and allow the elbows to soften so that the shoulders can relax. Let yourself really rest here for a moment. It's nice to take little breaks in between some of the more energetic postures as it can give us an opportunity to shed any tension that may have built up. Let your wrists relax, your elbows. Follow your in-breath and your out-breath again. And just notice where you feel it in the body now. giving your muscles permission now to soften and lengthen. Good. And so from here, we're going to lift ourselves back up to tabletop position. And we're gonna go ahead and swing the legs around so that we can come to sit onto the bum again. And then if you can, please remove the blanket out from underneath you. I think that'll be better for when we lie down. Uh, and then grab your yoga bolster and go ahead and bring it to the left side of your body and position it so that the short edge is facing the side of your hip. Perfect. And then go ahead and lie back. And 
Okay. And then from here, we're going to bend our knees and bring our feet to the earth. And we're gonna come into a supported bridge pose. So you're going to lift your hips, grab your bolster, and just slip it right underneath the pelvis. Set your hips down onto the bolster. And position it in a way where you feel like your whole pelvis is supported. It's okay if a little bit of the lower back is supported by the bolster too. It might feel nice. Once you're here, allow your arms to come out to the side like a T. And then just sink in for a moment. Accepting where you are in this moment. This is the ingredient that can help us um, experience the kinds of changes we hope to see in life. The, hope, the changes we hope to see from our practice the little shifts we hope to see and uh, connecting to those feelings of, of inner peace. It starts with meeting ourselves where we're at right now, right here, right now, and as best we can, allowing it with an open heart, a bit of compassion, If you feel a bit of resistance with that idea, you might offer yourself uh, a little message of, it's okay to be just who I am. Now from here, we're going to draw the right knee in towards the body. And we're gonna hold on to the knee. And you can gently draw the knee in towards the chest. And as you do so, slowly begin to lengthen the left leg out onto the floor. This is a stretch targeting the front of the hip, the front of the left hip. One little trick you can do to really activate or really feel into that space in the front of the hip is to draw the tailbone under a bit, creating a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt. It'll almost feel like the low back is gently moving towards the bolster and the tailbone is moving in towards the body. As you do that, you'll want to flex your left foot reach through the heel as if you're lengthening the left buttock down to the left heel. Continue to draw the right knee in. And then breathe, breathe into any area of the body where you feel like the breath is needed the most. Are there any spaces where you feel the breath gets stuck or where the body might feel stuck? See if you can breathe some of that compassion into that space, just allowing it to be just as it is in acceptance. And then slowly start to bend your left knee, replace the foot onto the earth, and set the right foot down. And just rest again for a moment in supported bridge, just taking note of how the um, left side feels in comparison to the right. It's one of the beautiful things about being human is that we are asymmetrical. No two sides are created equally. So we might take a moment to just appreciate all the subtle differences. 
Now let's go ahead and do the other side. We're going to hug the left knee in and then slowly start to straighten the right leg. And just pausing step by step here, tuning in to how the hips are feeling. If you're ready for that little bit more active version of this pose, you're going to do that little trick of drawing the tailbone in and flexing through the foot and reaching through the right heel. You might feel like you're moving that right buttock, right? right? glute muscle lengthening towards the right heel, down the back of the leg. Staying here and breathing. Another really great counter pose for all of the sitting we do. Nice stretch for the hip flexor muscles. Beautiful. Now from here, we're going to straighten both legs onto the mat. And so take your time as you make your way there. And we're just gonna sink in. Allow your feet to relax your legs. If you start to feel too much resistance in the lower back, then try that little trick of, of actively lengthening the tailbone down. It's that same gentle posterior pelvic tilt. What that does is it activates the abdominal muscles a bit, which can help to um, alleviate some of that tension that can sometimes occur in the lower back when we're in a back bend. If it feels like it's too much, then we're just going to bend the knees and come back to the bridge pose instead. Just finding our way, piece by piece, pose by pose, breath by breath. Allowing the energetic lines here, the, the lengthening of the front of the body. You might take a moment to imagine that your breath is moving from your toes up the front of your legs, over the front of the pelvis, all the way up to the heart and to the shoulders. And then as you exhale, you can imagine that the breath is spilling over the shoulders and flowing down the arms and out through the fingertips. And now let's begin to make our way back to bridge by bending one knee and then the other. Pausing here, just pausing for a moment to rest. And then when you're ready to, you're going to lift your hips. You'll slide the bolster out from underneath you. And then if you'd like, you can stay here in the more active version of bridge. Make sure that your feet are about the distance of the hips, but the toes are pointing more or less straight forward. From where I'm looking, it looks great. You're welcome to roll the palms open if you'd like, and draw the shoulders together underneath the body. The shoulder blades will move a little closer together again, and they'll move towards the pelvis, down your back. Activate the glute muscles. There's a, a squeezing and a lifting. We wanna push down into the feet evenly. So we can really feel the whole back body active and energetic. Check in with the neck and jaw. Make sure your face is soft and relaxed. And just breathe. 
This is a great pose. It really helps to strengthen our back, support that lower lumbar. And when you're ready to come down, you're gonna separate your shoulder blades apart. And then you're gonna lower down with as much control as you can, nice and slow. And once the hips are down, pause again. Just pause and breathe. Notice what you feel in your body. Appreciate the experience you're getting from your practice. Now go ahead and find your bolster again. And you're gonna pull it up along your right side so that it's positioned long ways. Yes, perfect. Okay. And then what I want you to do is straighten your right leg. And you're gonna roll onto your right side. And you're gonna rest your shin bone from the foot all the way up to the knee onto the bolster. Hopefully the bolster's long enough. It looks like you might have some long legs. And now make sure that you feel um, nice and comfortable as you're laying on your right side here. If you'd like, you can take the right arm and use it as a little pillow for a moment underneath the head. But you're going to bring your left arm straight up into the air. I want you to take a nice deep breath in. And then as you exhale, you're going to let that arm fall out to the left side like an open T shape. And you're going to let your right arm come into a T shape. And you're going to open up into a nice big twist. And now if you need to lift your right shoulder a little bit and scooch it towards the right so that the left shoulder can kind of fall towards the earth again, feel free. Good. And now I want you to take another deep breath in. And as you exhale, you're gonna bring your left arm up into the air again, and then bring both palms to touch. So you're kind of closing off the twist here for a moment. Good. And now inhale and retrace your steps and open up into a nice big twist again. And think of reaching from your mid back, from that little shoulder blade squeezy area. Good. And then as you exhale, go ahead and return the palms together. And then once more, inhale and open up into a nice big twist. Beautiful. And then just sink in. Go ahead and sink in here. Relax, let go. Sometimes it's helpful to scooch the hips a little closer to the bolster or away from the bolster. Just tune in if there's any area of the body that could use an adjustment. You're welcome to to make that call at any time during the practice. Enjoy pouring your body towards the floor. Drain the tension out of the shoulders and the upper back. Twists are a great way to release upper back tension. Great way to soften the edges of the upper, upper chest as well. Good. Let's take a nice breath in. And exhale to return to your right side. bringing the palms back together. Nice. And then we're going to roll onto our back. And we're going to take our bolster and put it onto the other side and prepare for our little twisty on the other side. I think I might have a better entryway this time around. Okay, so this time we're going to straighten the left leg again as we did on the first side. And then we're gonna roll onto the left side 
and we're going to bring our right shin bone to the bolster. And hopefully we can allow the knee and the ankle and the foot to relax on the bolster as well. Good. And now this time, bring both your palms to touch. So you've got both your hands together in like a namaste position here. There we go. And then we'll try that dynamic movement here. Let's inhale the right arm up into the air and open up into that nice big twist, gently reaching from the space between your shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, go ahead and bring yourself all the way back to center. And as you do this movement, think about moving from your ribs. You're gonna do two more. Think of moving from your ribs as you kind of rotate here from the center out. Allow the arm to be an accessory. Let it just follow along. Initiate each movement from the heart. Beautiful, that looks like a really good, really good adjustment. Looks like you've got, you may have found a bit more movement in the rib cage there from where I'm seeing it. Let's open up one more time. Yes, very nice. And then we're just going to sink in. Let your leg be supported by that bolster. Let your shoulders relax. Soften the eyes, the cheeks, the jaw. And we'll take a breath in here and use the exhale to return to center. Beautiful. And then let's go ahead and roll onto our back. And we're going to come into another version of our supported um, reclined position. This time we're going to put the bolster behind the legs. So you'll want to pivot the bolster again so that it's um, the short edge is facing your body. Uh -huh. Go ahead and place it on the floor. Yeah. Um, bring it back to the long edge of your mat, to the right, yep, and bring it up towards, more towards the middle. And then you're gonna turn it a quarter of the way, clockwise. Yeah, so the short edge is facing your body. And then the bolster is gonna go beneath your legs this time underneath your knees, underneath the backs of your thighs to support the weight of the legs. Now, before you lie down, if you want, take your blanket, grab that blanket and use it for a little pillow. Yeah, good. Sometimes it's, it's really nice to, to just nurture the neck in this way. Good, and then go ahead and straighten the legs out over the bolster as you're ready to. And let your arms relax. And we're going to do a little mindful breath-based meditation. I'm going to teach you a really lovely breathing technique um, that's very helpful for the end of the day if we want to soothe the nervous system and help our, our body and mind move into that place of rest and digest. This breathing practice is a retention practice, meaning that we're going to be holding the breath. In this particular practice this evening, we'll be holding the breath on the exhale. Now, sometimes holding the breath um, is uh, a contradiction. And some reasons why that may be the case is if we have happened to have recent surgery on the um, trunk of the body somewhere, like uh, the abdomen or the chest, um, holding the breath may 
cause some unnecessary um, tension to the injured area. Another reason why we wouldn't hold the breath for a long period of time is pregnancy. The holding of the breath would cause too much stress for the baby. And so if either of those reasons don't apply tonight, then you should be all good with trying this breath practice. And so what I want you to do first is just bring your hands onto your abdomen. Somewhere where you can feel the lower ribs and the belly center. And I'd like you to just breathe easy right now. Breathe gentle, breathe as naturally and as gently as the breath will allow. I want you to notice as you breathe in the way that the chest expands a little and then the belly follows. And then notice how when you exhale, the, the belly relaxes and the chest relaxes. And sometimes in our yoga class, we instruct ourselves to um, feel the belly rise first and then the chest expand. So just explore for a moment without changing your breathing or controlling it at all. Notice what expands and contracts and if there's an order to it, in what order? What feels most natural? What comes most naturally to you as you're breathing? And now you're going to gently start to lengthen the inhale and exhale. As you inhale, see if you can deepen the breath without causing any stress or strain. As you exhale, see if you can elongate the exhale. Maybe it's a little longer than the inhale. Starting to create an extension of the breath out. And now I'm gonna guide you into a full cycle of breath. And so on your next inhale, I want you to breathe in and fill up your lungs to their fullest capacity. Feel the ribs expand, the chest, all the way up to the collarbones, maybe a bit of the shoulders. And then exhale the breath fully either through the nose or through the mouth and slow it down so you can feel all the sensations of the breath as it leaves the body, all the way to the bottom. And then pause for a moment, return to nice, natural, easy breath. And just notice how that felt. If any part of the breathing feels like stress or strain, like a tension in the face or um, a tightness happening in the neck or the throat. And that means that we're trying too hard. We may be trying to stuff the breathing in a little too deeply, too, more deeply than the body may be ready for. So if you start to feel that, then just gently ease yourself out of the, the depth of your breath. And return to a breathing that feels most natural, most gentle, most kind. Okay. So I'm going to guide you now into a full cycle of breath again, and we're going to include the retention, the holding of the breath of the exhale. I'll guide you. And so I want you to start with just a full cycle of breath. So you're going to inhale, breathing all the way up to your fullest capacity. It's really enhancing your awareness of the whole respiratory system. And now exhale everything nice and slow. And this time when you get to the bottom, see if you can push out a little bit more air so you're at your emptiest. And then you're gonna hold the breath when you get to the bottom. You're gonna hold the breath out. And now you don't have to breathe in right away. 
but just wait for the body's interest to breathe. It'll let you know when it needs that, that fresh inhale. And when it does, allow it. Allow it to flow back in you. Allow the breath to flow into all the nooks and crannies of your lungs again. All the little spaces in between the ribs. Allow it to flow into the abdomen. Circulate around the heart. And then just return to natural, easy breath. Natural, gentle, easy breathing. Just observing how you feel now, taking a moment to just rest and just be. Now go ahead and let your arms relax down by your sides. And I'm gonna guide you through one more round. So go ahead and take a nice inhale as you breathe in, filling all the way up to your comfortable capacity. It's feeling the whole expansion here of your lungs, like you're filling up two balloons. And then slowly exhale, 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 all the way to the bottom. And when you get to the very bottom, you're gonna hold the exhale. Again, you don't have to breathe in right away, but just wait. Wait for your body's interest to breathe. It'll always let you know when it needs that fresh breath. And when it does, allow it to flood in you like a fresh wave of energy, a fresh wave of prana, of your body's life force energy. And then return to natural, easy, gentle breath again. And notice the imprint of the breathing. Does the body feel heavy, at ease, relaxed, and still? Ideally, the body will feel very relaxed. And what about the mind? Notice the quality of the mind. Ideally, it may feel more open and spacious, a little less cluttered, wide space, like a wide open sky. I'm going to be quiet for a few moments and just allow you to be here. Just rest. I'll come back in a little bit and I'll, I'll guide you back from your restful place with a soft bell and a little guidance. gently and slowly begin to awaken yourself. 
Feel free to wiggle your fingers and toes. Sometimes it's nice to nod the head a little side to side and deepen the breath a bit. And then allow the eyes to open and really follow your own intuition here on what would feel best as you slowly awaken. And take your time. There's, there's really no time to rush. And then slowly roll to one side. And you might pause there for a moment of peace before pressing yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Seated once again with that nice, steady presence, long spine, relaxed body. And you can bring your palms to your heart center into Anjali Mudra. The word Anjali is a Sanskrit word. It means peace. So you may take a moment now to contemplate what it would look like, what it would feel like to spread peace wherever you go. And then together, let's close our practice with a single om. If you'd like to join me, take a nice full breath in again. Oh. Namaste. Thank you, Dana. I got you on mute. If you would like to, to say anything, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. Good, good. I hope you're ready for a nice, lovely night's sleep. Yep, ready for bed. Thank you. Namaste. Have a great night. You too.